Daddy, I know you're at home watching. I wish you could have been here with Shim next year. here, my brother Avrumi, who just got married, Baruch Hashem, Mazel Tov. I'm so lucky to have a Rebbe who I've been close with for the past, I think it's 13 years now. Um, the rub of the Shlur by Feiner, I look up to him, and I'm sure, as we all do, but I got close with him in Eretz Yisrael, and he's been a, a light for me, and I was lucky enough to meet Rabbi Neuberger at the at the, um, at the dinner, the White Shul dinner. And we're mamish blessed to be here, to be able to give some chizik for all of us who need it. Um, and I'm excited to hear from Rebbe and Rabbi Neuberger. And um, this is a kumzitz. So everybody, please join if you're at home. I'm looking at you right now. Actually, I'm looking at you right now. I'm looking at you. I don't know which one. But if you're at home, Please sing along and come with us here. This is, we're bringing you here to us in this uh, time of separation. So, uh.
What a tremendous echos. This wonderful opportunity to go into Slichus. At the end of Shnaz Tavshin Pei, a very special event, beautiful Maima tonight. With my beautiful Yedid, Talmud, Rebelli, Schoshva brother, Hachos and Hayokar, Rabbi Vromi, and of course, each and every one of you, and a special schos, as always, to be accompanied by our unparalleled associate Rav Ramati Nubagur Shlita. A beautiful way to start, Rocham Avaka Baner, followed by Inani Mamin. I'd like to share with you briefly Rav Nachman Mibresov writes in Likutei Maran that we have many chokhmas in the world, many types of wisdoms. Kayadua, as is well known, we have the Zion Kone Hamanora corresponding to the Zion Chokhmas Sheba'ola. Rabbi Yonas and Eifshitz and Yaros Davash, the Chida, and Midbar Kadamas, they write that among those Zion Chokhmas is none other than Chokhmas HaMuzika, the wisdom of music. Now, what does that mean, the wisdom of music? The Vilna Gon writes, it's an unbelievable concept. A Yesod that simply is unforgettable, written by Rabbi Yisroel Mishklov, one of the gross Talmidim. And now, done with the introduction, it says, Pasa Shulchan HaMitzvah Tulius Baaretz. And there the Vilna Gon told this Talmidim that Moshe Rabbeinu was given not just Torah Shabbat Torah Shabbat as he stood at the apex of Sinai, Moshe Rabbeinu indeed was given all the chokhmas sheba olam, all the wisdoms of the world. And as we said, among those wisdom was counted chokhmas Musaka, the Vilna Gaon told his close disciples that Moshe Rabbeinu was given the wisdom of music in our Sinai, and if you know how to tap into that profound koach of music, you can actually be Machaye Mason. You could bring the dead back to life. No coincidence, perhaps, that so many people the world over wake up to music. Because it speaks to the soul, Modani Lfanecha, Shechazar Tabi Nishmasi, each and every morning when they undergo a Me'ein, a Bechina, of Tchias Amesim. What speaks to the soul? What speaks directly to the Neshama? The Vilna Gon said, that's the Chokhmah music. It could be Machaye Mesim. And then we turn back to Likutei Maran, where in Rav Nachman and Rebessif writes that you could talk about wisdoms of the world, you could talk about Amunah, and you could talk about Bitochet. But there's only one means by which these lofty ideals can penetrate into the inner recesses of the Neshama. How do we take these lofty ideals of Amunah, Bitochet, all the chokhmas, how do we allow it to penetrate into our soul? How do we allow it to be imbued and inculcated within our leva nefesh pshuto kim ha-shmo? Writes likute maran ayyadei koach hanigin. If you close your eyes and you sing with an Eli and Avrami Shwebo and you sing these precious hallowed words of Anani Mamin, you don't simply say it, you don't simply think it, but you sing it, writes Likute Maran. You thereby allow this lofty, profound message to penetrate into the inner recesses of your soul and it becomes part and parcel of your neshama, of your etzamos. Yes, the Jewish people believed when they left Mitzrayim. But it wasn't until they sang as Yashir Moshe, when that belief in our Kodesh Ruchu was accompanied by a Nigan, by a Shira, by a Zimra, then it became a Vayaminu Bashem of Moshe Avdo. You take these concepts of Yiddishkeit and you come together, Ba'achtus, and we sing with the Chosh Shwebo brothers, and we tap into this profound Koach of Musica of music, of Koach HaNigan, of Shira and Zimra, you close your eyes, you rock back and forth, and you think about the Mystic Emistik Amunem Bitochon, and you allow it tonight as we go into Slichus Tavshin Pei to penetrate into your Neshama, to become part and parcel of your essence, to become part of every fiber of your being. It's a Gevaldi Yeschus, we have the Shwebos with us. Let's close our eyes, let's continue to sing. And allow the Amun to be talking in HaKadosh Baruch Hu to penetrate yet deeper into our lofty Neshamas.
me to do that because you just talked about my Dani and I was like we didn't rehearse that song I'll tell you that but that's the best
ורחמים תשוב, ושישכון בשיחה. כאשר דיברת, ושישכון בשיחה. כאשר דיברת, ולירושלים Singing Virushalayim, you close your eyes, the beautiful melody. Think about Chal Yisrael being able to go up to Yerushalayim, go up to Beis Hamikdash, the dreamy scene we all visualize so many times. To be able to bring a carbon up to Beis Hamikdash. Part of the avoida of a carbon would start days before. Days before, you would pick out an animal and you'd set it aside. This is the animal you're going to be makriv. And you'd inspect the animal, make sure that it was perfect. No mumin, looked beautiful. The Mepharshim explained, when we start slichas four days before Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, we're preparing ourselves for our own Akedah. We blow the ayol, the shoifer shall ayol. 
we prepare ourselves for our akeda, for our hakrava, where we're becoming close to the Rabbana Shalom. And before one becomes close to the Rabbana Shalom, he checks himself out for mumin. He doesn't look in the outside. He looks in the mirror. He looks deep, deep inside. Starting four days before. Motzei Shabbos Kodesh for the next four days. We're going to be preparing our carbon, looking deep within inside our set within outside ourselves, looking for those mumin that perhaps have crept up, looking to make sure that we're the most beautiful that we could possibly present ourselves to the Rabbanu Shalom. Come the Yom Hadin, Haba Aleinu Litoiva.
What a beautiful Ishai Rebo. And what a powerful message indeed. Take on David Melech's to Hillam Kapitol Lamid, Mizrashir Chanukah Samayis Ladovid. And of course, that well known Kapitol concludes Lamani is Emercha Chavid Velo Yidom, Hashem Alokai Liola Modeka. And when the Radomska Rebbe became Rebbe, the first Shlomo, he had a Chosid who came back, he was visiting with the Kotzker. And the Kotzker asked this Chosid news to tell me over a vort, a shtickle taira from the new Rebbe, from the Tefer Shlomo. So this Radomska Chosid told the Heilige Kotzker as follows. And the Radomska just darshaned, that Aaron a coin after the tragic demise of his two beloved sons, Nodav and Aviu, the Torah Kadosha extols the Maila, the virtue of an Aaron a coin, Vaidom Aaron. He remained ever reticent, not a word of complaint, not Khalila to be Mahara Achami Dosav Yisparach. But explain the Radomska that David Melech was even on a higher Matrega. Because yes, Aaron Akoin, in the midst of his suffering, in the midst of his adversity, of that painful experience of losing his two precious children, Mikrovai Akodesh, you're right, Vaidom Aaron, it's a Gavaldig Amayla. But David Melech, you know what his Gavaldig Dargim Yuchenes was? David Melech, Lamani is a Mercha Chavad, Avelo Yidom, I will always forever sing incessantly to the Rebona Shalom, Avelo Yidom, and I will not suffice to merely remain silent, even in the midst of my suffering, even when I have a rebellious son of Shalom, even when I'm running for my life from Shalom Melech, no matter what the challenge, what the calamity, Afa Peking, David Melech says, Yes, Hashem, I ask you, Rakata Yachol Afoch Mispedil Machol, Hafachta Mispedil Macholi. But Dabra Melech says, no matter what, Lamani is a Mercha Chovet, Velo Yidom. I'm never, ever going to stop singing your praises, Yibona Shalom. No matter what you send my way, I never stop loving you for a second, for but a moment, and I'll never stop singing. Some say for Allah Taira and Pastor Shmini adds, David was just like an Eev, and Eev told us, Hashem Nosen, Hashem Lokach, Yishem Hashem Evorach. Hashem Nosen, what do you have to add? Hashem Nosen explains to some cipher. Only when Hashem took away from me of his wife, his children, his parnasa, his gesund, when he lost everything, that's the moment that he realized all the blessings that he had all along. But he never appreciated them. We only appreciate what we have when the Rebbe Shalom takes it away. How many times do we wake up after we lose a tzaddik, after we lose a loved one? And only then do we wake up and we ask ourselves, did we tell them how much we love them? Did we sing praises to the Rebbe Shalom for giving them, uh, our, giving us that precious gift all along? Explains this, I'm safe, for that was the Madrig of David Melech. Hashem, even when you take things away from me, I'll never stop praising you, not only for what I still have, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to reflect and retroactively I'm going to praise you for all that you gave me initially that I never fully appreciated until this moment when you took it away. Moreover, Abosa, we've lost Anche Chesed, Anche Maiso, Tzadikim, Chasidim, loved ones to this horrible virus. Let's not lose any other Yid Khalil Vachas. And let's appreciate all of Klaiso that still is alive and well today. Let's never wait until we lose them before we have to wake up and thank Hashem for them in the first place. No matter what Hashem sends our way, we'll never stop counting our blessings. We'll never stop singing to the Almighty above. We will never stop loving him with our leva nefesh and never stop thanking him for all the blessings, the gifts, and the special people in our lives. So go out and appreciate your family, your loved ones, your friends, appreciate Kla Yisrael. And let's daven, let's sing for a time of no more tsaris, of a fias go tzedek, from heira of yamein and wamein
Come with me, little on the shoulder. Let me hold you in my hand, and we'll fly away. You and I together to a place down on the line. Come with me, little Miss Don't shy away. Do as you're told. A little child waiting to be born today. You're to be his one, his soul. But dear mother, oh no, I don't wanna go. There is so much pain and need. Let me stay here up in heaven where it's safe and I'll be pure. Please don't make me go away. Can't you see I'm so afraid? Come with me, little Nishama. It's time you faced your destiny As we fly beneath the clouds now I will show you There is so much you can be Yes, Over there, look, someone's learning tired. There's another deep in prayer. I will stay here if you answer me. It's all I need to know. You must promise me, dear friend, that I too will be. Come with me, little Miss Shamalan. Oh, it's a task that I must do. As I tap you on the lip, you will forget me. You're on your own, it's up to you. Come with me, little Miss Shaman, and let me hold you in my hand, and we'll fly away, you and I together, to a place above. I'm not ready to go with you Will you take me? I don't know Let me stay right here where I am There's so much more I need to do 
come with me Little Miss Chandelier I've only come to take you home And there is no need to fear your destination You've earned a place right by the Ellie, I'm getting nervous. You read minds. I was sitting in my dining room this afternoon, Shabbos, learning the parsha, and the Torah tells us, "Kikaroi velecha hadover meoid." We know that the Mefarshim explain this is referring to the mitzvah of tshuva. I'm trying to figure this out. This is the mitzvah which is easy. This is the mitzvah which is accessible, changing our personality, changing who we've been for 10, 20, 30 years. That's kikaroi velecha hadover me'od. And I realized ki cover velecha dover ma'od doesn't mean it's easy. It means it's close. Don't look outside. Don't look anywhere else. Tshuva means returning to oneself. Finding that pure, pure neshama. Digging deep down. And I began to think of this journey song, Little Nishamala. Tshuva is about finding that little Nishama. Right before the Rabbi Shalom puts it into our guf, how pure it was. You have to dig, you have to work, change is hard. But you're not looking for something that's outside of you. You're looking for something that's deep, deep, deep within you. Kikaroi velecha hadover me'or. Let's find the little neshama. Rav Moshe Feinstein, after Slichas, once said, Veruach kodshecha al tikach mimenu. David HaMelech said, Veruach kodshecha al tikach mimeni. David HaMelech had Ruach HaKodesh. That's not a Chiddush. But each and every one of us in another hour or so is going to say, V'ruach Kodshecha Tikach Mimenu. Rav Moshe said, a comment in passing. You see, each of us has, deep down, that Ruach Kodshecha, the little, little spark, that little Neshamele, Next four days, Rosh Hashanah, Seres Yimei Tshuva, Yom HaKippurim. Let's dig deep, come back. Shuva Elai Shuva Aleichem. Find our little Neshama. Hine 
special sweet voices of Eli and Avrami Shwebel. And the sweetest voice of them all. Well, let me share with you a story of Lechsam Sefer. Lechsam Sefer on Friday night after the davening, before the commencement of the Suda Shabbos. Right after the tefillah, Lechsam Sefer would retreat to his private study. He would lock the door. He would learn the parsha Shnai Mikrov Yachatargum with Rashi Ramban. And nobody knew exactly what was taking place behind the locked door. Now, one Arab Shabbos Kodesh, three of his close Tamidim were talking among themselves and they said, You know what? Torah, he will eliminate Tzorach. Let's find out what exactly is going on. We know that our Rebbe the Samsefer. Uh, speaks with Elio Novi. Who knows? Who knows what we can discover? So let's cast lots and decide who's going to have the schus, the golden opportunity to go into the room to hide in his closet and to be privy to what exactly is taking place behind that locked door. So Moshe Shik, the Maram Shik, and two other Talmidim cast lots. And one of the Talmidim was chosen to go into the room before the Samsefer got there to hide inside the closet where the Samsefer had his walking sticks, some sparm, and some clothing. 
And he went into that closet, closed the door behind him, but he left it slightly ajar so he could be privy to what was taking place outside. A few minutes later, his Rebbe, the Chsam Sefer, walks in, locks the door, his usual derech on Friday night, sits down at the table in his private study, takes out a schumash, and he starts to learn the parsha out loud. And after a few minutes, the Talmud of the Chassam Sefer, of the Chassam Sefer hidden in the closet, hears a voice. He hears a voice that's not his Rebbe's voice, and he hops at his Rebbe is speaking with somebody. And all of a sudden, upon hearing that voice, he starts trembling. He's seized with Emo, Yeresus, and Zeyoha. He is overcome and overtaken by fear, by trepidation. And he's shaking, trembling so severely that the entire closet shakes, thus revealing that individual inside. And some Sefer stands up, opens up the closet door, sees his Talmud, and he says to his Talmud, Okay, it's time to leave. Come with me. I'm walking you outside the room. But as you walk outside the room, I want to ask you, my dear Talmud, did you see who was with me? Did you see anybody? And Talmud says, no, Rebbe, I didn't see anybody. Some safe returns to the Talmud and says, did you hear someone? He says, Rebbe, yes, I heard someone. And it was the sweetest voice that I've ever heard in my entire life. The Rebbe the Samsaifa turns to his Talmud and says, I see that you were in Zoha to actually view, to see Elio Hanafi. But I'm proud to say at least my Talmud was able to hear him. You were able to hear Elio Hanafi, the sweetest of all voices. So Mora of Rabbi said, when are we going to get to hear that sweet voice? It's the Torah for Shamas Agodol Nisan time. And we learn from the third parak of Malachi, Hine Anochi Shulech Lechem Esili Anovi Lefnebo Yom Hashem Agodol Veyanora. Yes, he comes every Brismila. We were given Brismila as a cloud, and Lel Yitzias Mitzrayim. And we know that he also visits each and every one of our homes, come Lel Seder, every single Pesach. Elio Anovi comes and he visits us, but we don't get to hear that sweet voice. So why isn't he here yet? I heard a vort years ago that if Elio Novi wants to come visit each and every one of our homes, Alel there, then why do we have to wait for the very end of the Suda? Shvo Hamas Chalagayim, we open up the door, the minute soul is, then we welcome in Elio Anovi. If he's joining us by the Seder, didn't we start the Seder? Come at the beginning of the Suda, open up the door. When you're welcoming in all the guests, walk in the best, the most special guest of them all, Elio Anavi. Why do you have to wait to the end of the Seder? And I heard an answer homiletically years back. The beginning of the suit, if we were to open up our doors to welcome an Eli Anavi, you know what we would see? We would look outside and say, hey, wait a second, you know what? My neighbor just redid his home. He's got a nicer looking home than I have. And look at that new Lexus, the BMW, the Maserati across the street. My neighbor has a much fancier car than I do. And while I'm peering into the windows, look at their candlesticks. Look at the sterling silver adorning their table. Look at what they have inside. Well, look how she redid her kitchen yet again. And we'd be jealous and we wouldn't be wishing each other well. And that sinaschina would come to the forefront. We're not ready at the beginning of a Seder to open up that door to see what's outside and say, yes, we're ready to greet Elio and Novi. I have my dear friends by the end of a Seder. By the end of a Haggadah Shal Pesach, who cares about the kitchen? Who cares about the Porsche, the Maserati, and the BMW? Who cares about the silver, the paintings on the wall? Who cares about the home? Benisa Nigalu, Benisa Nasidim Goel. By the end of the Seder Shal Pesach, 
Yes, indeed, only when we get to the very end. We could say, Yola, Yonavi, you know what? We weren't ready at the beginning. But after the Seder, we've reprioritized. We know what's truly important in life. By the end of the Seder, we can open up the door. We could see our friends' homes that are bigger than ours. We could see them singing at their table. I, the clothing might be nicer, the jewelry, the silver, the paintings on the wall. And the cars might be fancier or more expensive. And by the end of the Seder, you know what, Elianovi, we're going to open up the door ever so proudly. We're going to welcome you in with open arms, and we're going to say to ourselves, you know what? We don't care about what others have. We're going to stop looking out at others. Because indeed, we only wish the best on others. By the end of well, Seder, all we want is the goal. All we want is you, Elio Novi. We'll leave our homes and leave our cars. We'll leave America, the diaspora behind. All we want is a Gaula. It's Nisa, Nisa, Nigalu. Anis and Asid and Go, Elio, we're ready for you at the end of the Seder. Open up that door. Welcome him in. And then we're ready to sing, but we haven't heard that sweet voice just yet. So we didn't get him this year, Anisa. But according to Rabbi Yelazar, Betishrei Nigalu, Betishrei Asid in Ligoya, Ashoni Yed Aleph. In the world of Machshava, writes Rabbi Natam, maybe what we weren't Zochah to in the world of Misa, we could tap into our realm of Machshava. And we could say, you know what, we weren't Zochah to see you, to hear you, Elio Nafi, at the beginning of the year. But now when we start with Chodesh Tishrei, and listening to the sweet voices of the Shwebo brothers, Elio Nafi, they're fantastic. They're great and they're sweet as can be. But my dear Elia and Avrami, you just can't compare to Elio and Avi. And we can't wait to hear the sweetest voice of them all. Together with the Schwebels, let's keep that sweet sounds of music alive and well. And let's never stop yearning and pining for the sweetest voice of them all. The Elio and Avi, the Mavasar Hagula is going to sing ever so loudly and tell us, Klai Yisrael, Higi Azman, leave your fancy homes, leave the fancy cars, forget the jewelry, the dresses, the fancy elaborate simchas, leave the Gashmias behind, let's dance together, where it all truly matters by the Binyan by Yishlishi, and be as gold tzedek, v'mhei rav yameinu, amen v'yamein. Amen. Ravi, as long as we're in this conversation, we're okay. Um, the sweetest voice of them all is not here tonight. Um, it's my father. Tate, we're here with you, and we're going to sing for you, about you. And, of course, we're singing about the epic, universal Tate, Rabbani
entrar em viva serguiça Restei tu na erva Tu zain tate inimu One of the major aspects of Slichas is recognizing that Tata and Himmel, hoping, yearning, begging that he treats us as bonim, as sons, as children, as he acts as our avinu rather than malkeinu. But we have to call out. We have to be able to call out, Tata, Tata. It's an amazing thing. We all know the most famous paragraph in all of Slichas, Kel Melech Yeshev Al Kisei Rachamim. Kel Melech Yeshev Al Kisei Rachamim, always introducing the Yudgimul Midas. But the first one never begins, Kel Melech Yeshev Al Kisei Rachamim. We always start Kelerech Hapayim. First Yid Gimel Midas aren't introduced Kel Melech Yeshev Al Kisei Rachamim, but rather Kelerech Hapayim. The Farshim explain how does the Rabbanu Shalom get to the Kisei Rachamim? How do we remove him? How do we propel him to sit on the Kisei Rachamim? With our Slichas. So when we begin Slichas, we can't say yet, Kel Melech Yeshev Al Kisei Rachamim. We say, Kel Erech Apayim, have mercy on us. Then we already began the process of Slichas. We're confident. Now it's Kel Melech Yeshev Al Kisei Rachamim. Now the Rabbanu Shalom is sitting on Kisei Rachamim. Some of the G'day Lehem Lusser would have a problem when people would say, I'm going to say Slichas. We don't say Slichas. The Rabbanu Shalom says, hopefully, Slicha. Salachti. We're Mevakesh Slichas. And if we're mevakesh slichas, we know it's going to be kel melech yoyushev al kisei rachamim. He'll respond to our call of tate tate. He'll treat us with the rachmonas of a tate and himmel. the guitar sounding out there from the camera can you give me a, a, a thumbs up somebody look on the live stream Ooh.
Just a deaf man in the steel And to everyone's surprise He comes to shul each Shabbos And he prays with tear-filled eyes The sun is the chazan Though his voice is never heard But he sits there enjoying every word Watches every motion, every gesture that he makes And he stays till the very end, however long it takes and When the davening is over, he's the first to reach his son And the deaf man in the shtibu says, well done Now it's right before Yom Kippur in the shtibel there is fear Want to start Kol Nidre But the Chaz is still not there Oh, the shul is filled with people As the night begins to fall but the deaf man's chair stands empty by the wall And suddenly the Chaz comes rushing through the door He's wearing his white chazin's hat He's never worn before He pauses for a moment at his father's empty chair And quietly he wipes away a tear And he runs up to the beamer For there's no time left to wait Half the shul can hear the rabbi ask how come so late Just getting ready for Yom Kippur is all he'd say But now I'm going up to pray And he takes his place surrounded by the holy Torah and in a voice so beautiful He begins to sing Oh, every heart was broken Oh, and every soul burned bright From his condedre that Yom Kippur night When finished Avni Rabbi asked to tell What was it he was thinking of Who made him sing so well Well, you knew my dad was deaf, he said Last night he passed away It's the first time that my father's heard me pray And he takes his place around it by the holy Torah And in a voice so beautiful He begins to sing Oh, every heart was broken Oh, and every soul burned bright From his comely dray That Yom Kippur night Every heart was broken Every soul burned bright From his cold dread That young Kipper night Billy, the song reminds me My wife and I got married About 25 years ago, we were living first while I was learning in Kolel, Avodas Levi, now Yisrael's Kolel. We were living on Ford's Lane in Baltimore, Fountain View Apartments with many other younger lights. I remember 3636D in Fountain View Apartments and the neighbors upstairs, wonderful family, husband and wife were, were both deaf. 
And it was an interesting experience living right underneath them in these cheap apartments because the walls weren't all that thick. And when he would get up to exercise on an order track at 5 o'clock in the morning before driving into Washington, D.C. to work, if they got up at 5 o'clock in the morning, then indeed we got up at 5 o'clock in the morning. And when they had their first child, who Baruch Hashem was able to hear, they asked a Shaila and they got a TV in the house. A very firm couple, but they got a TV so that the child can grow up hearing actual words and knowing how to speak properly. But since the parents were deaf, they didn't know how loud the TV was. So not only did we get up at 5 o'clock to a Norda track every morning right above our heads, but I found out about all these TV shows that I've been missing out on all my life. Which ones? <laughs> so I got to tell you about this deaf couple, and they made a deaf Shabbat, uh, Shabbaton in Baltimore for their deaf friends and families, and we hosted some of the deaf people in our apartment, and I got to tell you, some of these people are the happiest people I've ever met in my life. What was so special about this Castor family living right above us, husband and wife, and deaf, I'll tell you, they appreciated every single thing that the Abishar gave them in life. We know the famous saying, the past is history, the future is a mystery, but now is a gift, and that's why it's called the present. These were people that never looked back and said, Hashem, why me? Why'd you make me deaf? Hashem, Mahia, what's going to be in life? How are we going to accomplish, acclimate ourselves to society? They never looked into the past. They never looked towards the future, but rather they turned the spotlight always, every single day. The right here, the right now. What does Hashem want me to do? They enjoyed, they savored every moment of the present, realizing every second was a gift. Moreover, a boy say, how can you have a Motse Shamus Kumsitz without bringing a Mailech Biederman to the table? A Mailech Biederman said, listen to this, my dearest friends. Lama, why? Lama and Memhei, Gematria 75. Ma Yihye, Gematria 75. Zokta Mailech Biederman, you know what gets hit and lost? When we can't stop asking Lama, why me? Why is this happening? COVID-19, coronavirus. All these sorrows taking place, Hashem, Lama, why is this happening? Why was I forced to endure this, Lama? And then you have other Jews who start asking Mahia, what's going to be? What's going to be tomorrow? What's going to be next week, next month? What is this going to end, Mahia? How do you get through the Lamas in life? How do you get through the Mahias in life? Right? So my Lechbidim in Lomo is Gematria 75. And my Yihyeh is Gematria 75. And believe it or not, so is Bitocho, Bidiyuk, Gematria 75. You know the answer to all the Lomas in life? Indeed, the answer to all the my Yihyehs in life comes down to one word, to one concept. Lama 75, Mahia 75. Hashem does it all, Bechachma, Bechachma, Gematria 75. And it all comes down as it always does to be Tocha. Haboteach Pashem, Chesed Yisab Avedo. If you're Boteach Pashem, you don't need to ask Lama. If you're Boteach Pashem, you never need to ask Mahia what's going to be tomorrow. You enjoy the present, you enjoy the gift of now. You savor every precious moment of life. Like the deaf family that lived above me, always happy. Never looking towards the past, never questioning the future. Enjoying and being happy with the present. Bitochan. But you have some people, they're always consumed with worry. I, but what's going to be tomorrow? What's tomorrow going to bring? 
Daigo, continue my lech bidamin. Daigo, as well, we start with an aleph, the beginning of the aleph phase. Aleph, Gimel, Dalit, hey, Osios, Daigo. Didn't we skip one? You bet we skipped one. We skipped the base because the base is bitochen. There is no bitochen in Daigo because if you're consumed and overpowered with worry, with Daigo, then you're missing the base of bitochen. Tochon 75, no Hashem planned it all. Bechokma. Gemachia 75, it's part of Hashem's master plan. Have bitochon, live with that bitochon. You never need to ask Lama, you don't need to question Mayir. You just need to be botech ba Hashem. And if you're so mech, ach verak in the ribona shalolo. So Moshe Wolfson writes, Simunas itecha. If you're so mech on Hashem, you'll always be besimcha. Never question what we're missing. Thank Hashem for what we have. Build that trust, and there's no need to worry in life. Let's be Zaycha Met Hashem to go to a world of BS Gold Tzedek without any worries when we see the MS ever so clearly. And may that Zaman come because. our family song. We sing this together. Schwebels, sing along. Min hamid sal karosiko Yononi pamecha vako Hashem li, Hashem li lo iro
Wir haben jetzt eine Karasse gehabt. Sometimes it takes Min Hamitzah for us to call out to the Rebbeinu Shalom. I was thinking as you were singing, Ellie, this year Min Hamitzah Karasika for many of us. But before the Kia Shafer, we always say, the Psukim of Minha Meitzai. This year, for many people, it will taka be Minha Meitzai from the confines of their own home. Minha Meitzai in isolation. Minha Meitzai with no one around them. Minha Meitzai Karosiko. Anna Nibi Merchav Ko. The Itzel of Petterberger, famous Talmud Muvuk of Rabbi Sol Salante. As a Rav in St. Petersburg, towards the end of his life, makes his way up to Yerushalayim, Yerakodesh. En route to Yerushalayim, he stops off, he spends the Yom Nairam in the famous Sabodka Yeshiva. And he's invited there to introduce Yem HaKippurim with the Shmuz to the Bachar. Rechil Yaakov Weinberg at the time, the Sri Dayesh, was a Talmud in the Slabodka Yeshiva. Says he remembers the frail, one of the Gedele Hadar, rise to the podium with tears in his eyes. He spoke to the Bacharim, Al Tashlicheni Le'ez Zikna. Al Tashlicheni Le'ez Zikna. Don't throw me to the time of old age. He explained to the Bacharim that you have a king with a soldier that defected from the army when MIA, he abandoned the kingdom, he abandoned the king and his army. A treasonous act. No one could find where he is, no one knows what's with him. And then, the king dies. And there's a new king. And this king is forgiving, giving amnesty to anyone with previous, previous crimes, previous wrongdoings. So this soldier figures he's going to come now. He's going to come now to the king. And he's going to be willing to make up all that time that he lost. The king shuts the door in his face. Now you come. What could you do for me in my army now? Decades later, you show up. You're ready to work. Said Rebitzel of over his tears. Please, don't allow us to sleep until we're older. Allow us to wake up when we're still young, we're still fresh. We're still able to fully come back to you. Allow us to realize that we have to call out to you. You're the only answer. You're the only solution. Vani te khaz de khom patakhti Yokei 
Ipibishu amosa Vani Mechaz dikha Batakti Adam Yogei Libi Bishu asecho Kneyo Ayvani Mechaz dikha Batakti Yogei Libi Bishu was Go mano Zana Levaya on Erev Shabbos Kodesh. As I mentioned in the Drosh of the Shabbos morning, of an unbelievable, truly remarkable Asha Schayel, matriarch of a special dynasty, the Shonkov family. This is Esther Shonkov, Zechona Levrocha, passed away in Erev Shabbos Kodesh at the ripe old age of 100 years old. Holocaust survivor went through Auschwitz. Lost so many members of her family. Liberated and miraculously reunited with her husband Yitzchak. And two of them a little while later reunited with their only son who had remained their only son, Usher Shonkov. And through Rabbi Usher, in Bodo Lachai and Baruch Hashem, she built a beautiful, unbelievable mishpacha. When I was preparing the drosh, I was looking through her memoir. Titled, There Are No Words. And one of many things that truly struck a chord in my perusal of this wonderful work was how this woman who lived through Gehenna on earth 
had to come face to face with Mengele Yamach Shemo Zichro, lose her parents and so many members of her family. And she writes in the book how the most painful thing in life to her was after she lost her husband Yitzchak. And Esther Shonkoff writes, and I never would have imagined it to be the case, but widowhood was the most painful thing that I ever had to deal with in my life. With all the starvation, with all the horrors of the Holocaust, with all the pain, going so many years without my husband, and yes, an amazing son and beautiful grandchildren, Enoch Lach or Enoch Lach. But she still felt alone. We have a lot of Torahs in Klai Yisrael. But one of the single most painful experiences by anyone, by any yid, is the pain, the indescribable agony of being alone. So we come together, this Leil Slichas. And we're ready to start a new year, Tavsh and Pe'alif. There are a lot of Tzoros going around. Rachman al-Litzlan, we're dealing with the COVID. We've been dealing with Petiras, Rachman al-Litzlan. We're dealing with a world that's been turned upside down for so many. Financial crises abound but let's never forget the pain of so many lonely souls let's never ever forget and lose sight of the pain of the amonus of the singles among us let's make sure to do our absolute utmost that no one's going to be alone that we're going to get through this sorrow as we've gotten through so many we're going to get through it together we're going to make sure that those who are alone, the Almanas, the singles, that they're cared for, they're getting called, they're getting texted, they're getting emailed. That client soul is going to make sure we're never, ever going to forget about the lonely ones. Among us, we're going to make sure to reach out and know that the only way we can ever be knit so within is the Bali of Muslim been telling us for decades. Each yochid, we can't do it as yechidim. We never have and we never will. The only way to be nitzel b'din is to make yourself a proud member of the klal, of the larger whole called klal Yisrael. And the way to do that is to reach out to those lonely souls and say, we're one team, we're one neshama. And we're never going to stop thinking and caring about every single one amongst us. Let's reach out to this a week of Slichas as we get ready for the Yom Adin and to rest assured that the way we're going to be Nitzel Adin is because we're going to stick together. We're going to love one another. We're going to correct that sin of Sinem. We're going to care about the lonely souls. We're going to reach out and make sure that everybody is cared for. Not only the Amonas, the ones going through their own personal tragedies. Nothing's as painful as loneliness. Let's make sure they know every single day that indeed they are never, ever alone. I'm a very tired old and worn out man. And my eyes have long been blind Most things that people say to me Just seem to slip my mind Oh, but the suffering in painful times That were in years long gone 
are still as clear upon my memory as the numbers on my arm. Before the world, knowing what to say when the very last survivor fades away. Fades away. I hold my grandson close to me, his fingers trace the pattern of. My tears. He asked me, Grandpa, tell me why do you cry? What is it that you fear? And I tell him there once was another child who smelled as sweet and felt as. Fleeting shadow, no one will recall the faces of the past. What will become of all the memories? Are they to scatter with the dust in the breeze? Yet one thought gives me comfort. Okay. Okay. We got ten minutes or no? Ten minutes, all right. We know that God in heaven won't forget the theme of Rosh Hashanah. Yei Mazi Karan. Zoicher Kol Hanishkochis. Turn to the Rabbanu Shalom. The next four days, opening up our hearts and souls, preparing ourselves for the Yom Hazikaron, a day where we'll stand in front of the Rabbanu Shalom, perhaps feeling quite small. But appreciating that he zoicher kol hanishkachos, all the tremendous, tremendous accomplishments and triumphs of our ancestors, of generations and generations of Jews, 
we stand on their shoulders. The Rebbeinu Shalom is Zoycher Kol Anishkachis. He reminds, he remembers, as the Tkiyas go up, the call to the forefront, those memories, these songs have a way of piercing the neshama, piercing the soul, opening ourselves up, opening our neshama up, being able to pour it out to the Rabbana Shalalam. And that's the process of tshuva. Kikara ve'lecha hadavr ma'oyed, as we said before. We've now opened up our neshamas, opened up our souls. Let's go and present it to the Rabbana Shalom. Let's go be mevakesh slichas from him. Hopefully he will respond. Vayemir salachti. Okay, this is a, uh, a song I wrote when I got out of the uh, when I got out of the hospital. I was in I was in the hospital for Corona, with the coronavirus back early March, and my one of my best friends, Gedalia Baruch Fuchs, Gadi Fuchs, wrote this song. He said, "From me," he said, "Ellie, we got to work on this together." I've been working on it for two years, and when I got out of the hospital, it was the first song I sang. And um, I had some amazing musicians, 20 musicians that from home joined me in this. One of them, Jordan Peters, over here on my right, and Usher Lab on my left. Um, he didn't do it, but you know, he wasn't around. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, this is a song of complete gratitude. Rebbe was talking before about gratitude. Just the absolute gratitude I had to be able to come and sing and play after having the lungs of a drowned victim. So, I mean, this was such a moment for me. And I'm going to share it again with you. I'm going to try to get there. As I speak about this, I'm thinking about it. And I'm going to think about that absolute gratitude I have to be alive, to be able to do what I'm doing for all of you. This is a big schuss.
on behalf of us all, the incredible Rabbi Eli Schwebel and Avrami Schwebel. And we miss the Choshva Father Rivi. We know that he and his Aisha Schayel are shepping to Menasir Shanachas, as we all are. I want to thank Jordan. I want to thank Usher. Baruch Roshovsky for doing the incredible lights tonight. I want to thank I get the new fellow, Yechiel Zlandek, Daniel List, Tuvia Silverstein, Asana Feller, and the entire White Shul team. All the efforts behind the scenes, everybody else involved in this end, anyone else that Rebelli wants to thank. Kobe Natanel on sound, and ZK Zalman Capel on the live stream. Thank you so much for making this happen. Of course, our sponsors, we cannot forget that, okay? And that is Shalom Veg from Westwood, Ari Zucker from Elytra Health. And of course, Yaakov Gate from Cross River. Guys, thank you so much for this. Without you guys, this could not have happened. So, Rebbe, Rav Neuberger, thank you so much. And the Mir Tushem will do this again. This was a big honor for all of us. Thank you. A real pleasure. Thank you all so much for being Mishnatev. Best wishes for Aksiva Aksiva Taiva, Ashana Tevah Mesuk, and all the Tvilashvinis Gamba Baratzen.